Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again. Today I want to start a new series on Automate Your Life here and what I wanted to focus on is the smart home or home automation device security and I, I want to create basically a series of lectures here for you that run through some of the security concerns that you probably already have and then hopefully give you a couple of solutions here as we go through to help you deal with security around these kinds of systems in your home. So let's get going. Okay, so what we're gonna be talking about today is basically the smart home hub. Now, this has obviously become the center of your smart home or your home automation here. And so this is the first device type I wanna tackle here in this new series. Now, what I wanna start off with are describing a few of the issues that we've seen here over the last few years as these smart home hubs have developed and been deployed all over the world. So, you know, the two smart home hubs that I'm really going to describe here are the Google Home series and the Amazon Echo series. We'll deal with other styles of hubs here, but I really want to talk about those voice controlled hubs uh, in this specific video here. So the first issue or, or discussion I want to have here is basically around some vulnerabilities that have actually come out in the last few years. The, probably the biggest one that attacked both of these devices as well as any Bluetooth enabled device was called Bluetooth Blueborn. And so this was a vulnerability discovered and you know it was patched actually more or less by the community involved with handling Bluetooth. So it's not something that was Google Home specific or Amazon Echo specific. Those devices were just involved in this larger scale vulnerability that was out there. Now what I think this illustrates and the reason I bring it up is the fact that these devices use a number of technologies within them like Bluetooth and like some other radio transmitters or, or methods for hand, handling communication, they use these other technologies as part of their backbone. And I think it's gonna be more these types of technologies that are going to have the vulnerabilities that are going to impact these devices. Now, keep in mind, you're already carrying around a phone with that kind of vulnerability in it. Lots of your laptops have this vulnerability in it as well, or had this vulnerability. And so this wasn't device specific, but it does illustrate my point here that technologies like Bluetooth are going to be issues for these devices and they're going to have to be patched. And so you're going to have to be aware of that, of opening your house or your home up to these vulnerabilities in terms of controlling pieces of your home. So now I don't think that's a major concern here. When I get right down to it, the fact that you know, Bluetooth is on here and, and Bluetooth is relatively mature now. And so I don't think we're gonna find a ton of vulnerabilities over the years. And I think they will be relatively easy to patch. I don't think we're going to run into some major issue whereby Bluetooth has, has to be turned off on all of our devices. So, you know, keep that in mind. This is a relatively small security issue in my mind. So the second style of issue that I want to talk about. I'm going to kind of combine two issues here. You know, when the Google Home Mini first came out, it had some issues uh, in terms of uh, a hardware, one of the buttons on the top actually. One of the media members who had received a Google Home Mini early on, just before they were released to the general public, actually found a way to trigger on the mic to always listen and always record on Google servers. Now, that feature was immediately uh, removed or, or disabled by Google. So, you know, they immediately addressed that hardware concern and from what I hear, they're relatively close to re-enabling that, having patched that security hole or that issue there with the device. So not something they're trying to do, and I know that's a privacy concern for a lot of people. We're not here to talk about privacy concerns today. I'll, I'll do that in a separate series, but in general, 
a hardware issue like that can either be repaired or I think you would see recalls actually on devices like this if there was a major, major issue that Google couldn't fix. So the second issue that I'm gonna kind of combine into the hardware discussion here is really around the sound-based hack is what I'll call it. And so there's some researchers out of China who've actually said that they've managed to hack all of the voice assistants, not just Google and uh, Amazon here. They've actually managed to hack basically every voice assistant out there with a sound-based hack. And so what they did is they took a transmitter that was able to transmit at a higher frequency than you or I can hear. So, you know, maybe your dog could hear this, but you or I couldn't hear that. Our Google Homes and our voice assistants on the Echo series, and even this affects iPhones with Siri, could hear these commands. And so they actually did react to these commands according to these this research group. So, you know, for me, an issue like this is relatively easy for all of these companies to go ahead and patch. The reason I say that is because it's relatively easy to isolate where humans where humans can speak in terms of a frequency band. So, you know, we kind of call that in, in the audio world, we kind of call that a mid-range frequency. And so I think it's pretty easy to go ahead and isolate commands to that mid-range frequency with all the brains behind these voice assistants or voice controlled assistants. So I do want to describe a little bit the, the software behind these home hubs that we have. And I think it's important just to understand a little bit of the basis for these devices. The reason I say that is I think it provides a little more understanding of how security can be achieved on these devices. So what I'm describing here, and I'll use the Google Home as an example, but this applies to the Amazon Echo series as well, and lots of the devices that uh, Amazon has gone ahead and licensed and put a version of Alexa onto them. So you know we're describing the Ecobee 4 here and a lot of the other Alexa-enabled assistance uh, devices like the Sonos One as well. So what I'm describing here is basically a break between the voice assistant and the operating system or the kernel of these devices. And so, you know, Google Home or Google has been relatively good at kind of hiding what the back end or what's controlling all the hardware on their Google Home actually is in terms of code. My expectation is that there would be a form of Android on this device capable of operating a number of apps and so I think you know then you can kind of transition into thinking about the Google Assistant is just running as a separate kind of application on this device. So what you really have is you have two separate at least two separate pieces of code here that are running on your Google Home. And again, this applies to the Echo as well with Alexa being separate from the Linux kernel that Amazon says they have. So the reason I would say this is a more secure framework for, for security purposes here, you know, really what we have is two completely separate pieces of software there. You know, the Google Assistant is really being managed on its own. You can see that by the fact that Google has put this app out there on even an iPhone. You know, you can go, you can get the Google Assistant there. You can get it on a Chromebook. It's, it's in lots of the new Chromebooks. It's in your Google Home and it's in lots of Android phones. So that's a separate piece of software that can be managed from a security standpoint very differently and separately from the Google Home kind of backbone there. So, and when we describe that Google Home backbone, that's an internal piece of code that not a lot of people have had a look at, and I don't think a lot of people are going to get a look at. Google has been very, very good over the years at hiding their code, at keeping that away and keeping it very secure. So, you know, what I'll say is their history is really, really positive on this. And of course, there's going to be people who are going to point out the issues they've had over the years. And they have. Any software company is going to. But 
what I'm saying to you here is this is a very, very capable company, if not the most capable company on the planet at producing code and creating security in software systems. And so, you know, I want to kind of transition into my last part of the discussion. And this is where I give a little bit of my personal preference. And this is why I have over, or one of the reasons I have over the last year or so here, kind of preferred the Google Home to Amazon. I just, what I see from Google and what I've seen from Google over the years is really, you know, attention to issues like privacy and security. They try to treat their customers with respect. They have a really good framework for secure code as well and are world class. They're probably the best company in the world for producing code. So you have the best company in the world right now producing a device for you and trying to make it secure. Is it going to be perfect for the next few years? I don't think so. Can it get to perfection? Probably pretty close, but like I said earlier, you know, some of these vulnerabilities here coming from, you know, the radio transmitters on your device, those are probably going to still crop up every once in a while. And so, you know, the good news is the Google Home and the Alexa devices, they all update on their own. You don't have to go do a patch process here. So they'll keep you up to date. So like I said, I want to be able to give you a few things here for you to do in terms of securing your home hub. And so this takes a little bit more time here for me to explain something. And what I'm going to say is that, you know, the Bluetooth issue that took a close proximity for someone to exploit that they would have had to be relatively close to your device. The sound based hacks that I've talked about are they require a close proximity you again have to be really close to your device you actually have to usually be in the house for those to work is what was described in the report so what i'm saying to you really here is distance is your friend if your google home or your amazon echo device is sitting out in, right next to your door or in your garage or something like that people are going to be able to pick up part of that wireless signal from relatively far away from your home. Otherwise, you know, people are going to need to be pretty close to your home. And so I think in general, you're going to be able to see that issue coming, so to speak, especially if you're someone who's going and getting some cameras on the outside of your home. So I would say that in general, distance is your friend and that's gonna be really important here for a lot of your devices. A lot of people who live in condos or lofts or you know in in apartments, they're going to have difficulty creating that distance from the outside world and you know I think we've all experienced living in that situation where you can see four or five Wi-Fi signals out there in your condo or in your apartment. And so, you know, that really to me this this goes back to what I think a lot of network security professionals have been talking about for a long time. This is really the basis for security of your home network and your Google Home, your Home Hub, your Amazon Echo, those all live within your home network and that wireless password, the wireless encryption that you use on your router is probably the most important thing. And so, you know, there's there's some articles out there and I'm not going to go through all of that because that's kind of offside for automate your life. But there's a style of network encryption or, or wireless packet encryption that does work and there's a style that doesn't work these days. And so, you know, I think in general, making sure you have the right style of encryption is really important. And secondly, yeah, you gotta change your passphrase every once in a while and you gotta put these devices and re-enable them and put them back on your, your network there. So you do kind of have to do that if you wanna maintain a relatively secure wireless network. You're just gonna be a little tougher than the guy sitting next to you who leaves his wireless network open or uses a poor form of encryption and then you know is a much easier hacking target for any of your neighbors or anybody in the area trying to get into somebody's home network. 
I hope this was really beneficial for you to understand some of the basic issues here with security around home hubs. If you have any other questions or there's anything else you'd like me to kind of go and research here or look up for you, if you're having trouble finding something, let me know in the comments below. Happy to have a look at things or discuss things with you because I know, I know, you know, with a video like this, people are sometimes going to be concerned about what I'm saying in one way or the other, or they're going to, uh, you know, have a different opinion. And so, the other thing that obviously I'd welcome if you'd hit a like or a subscribe. We'd love to have you on the channel. And, you know, as I continue with this series here, I think you're going to see more and more, more and more where the vulnerabilities lie here in your home network and in your smart home as well. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.